What I'm about to show you makes the Chicago Bulls overwhelming. As Zach Levine remains on health and safety, DeRozan, Caruso, Lonzo, and Vooch held it down for Chi-Town, keeping them as the second seed in the Eastern Conference. Scarily for other East contenders, the seventh pick from the 2019 NBA Draft, Kobe White, has returned from injury and is starting to find a rhythm. Here's every reason making Chi-Town a top contender in the Eastern Conference, and stay tuned to see the factor making Chicago most difficult to deal with. Before continuing, only 11.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll give you a follow back. Links in the description for both those platforms. Alex Caruso exited Chicago's last game against Houston with a left foot sprain, and the Bald Mamba status is currently day-to-day. -day. In terms of the other players sidelined for the Bulls, Devon Dotson became the 12th Chicago Bulls player to enter protocols this season and joins Zach Levine, Ayo Dosumu, Troy Brown Jr., Alize Johnson, and Matt Thomas as players currently in protocols. A separate video entirely could be made about the impact of Caruso, but since he and five other key Bulls rotation players are currently out, we're going to break down the game of a man stepping up in the absence of those guys. Over his last five games, Kobe White has posted 20 points twice, and since going to protocol himself and then returning, Mr. White's poster LeBron and also dropped a 24-piece, including five triples against the Houston Rockets. Through 11 games, he's only shooting 27% from three, which puts him on opposing team scouting reports as a liability from deep range. Houston's defense went under screens and left him open in their last matchup, but what they failed to realize is that for his career, Kobe shoots a much more respectable 35.4% from deep. In fact, he took a hefty average of six threes each game in 2021, and knocked down a solid 36% of them. So you have to watch out for and check Kobe at the three-point line, despite the fact that his numbers from distance on paper are below average so far in 21-22. But coming up, I'll show you why treating Kobe as a legit offensive threat when trying to guard Chicago's attack overall is much easier said than done. Now we have to talk about the current number one option with Zach Levine's sideline, and potentially even with Levine on the court. DeRozan's been the Bulls' most valuable player this year. In last week's NBA.com MVP ladder, Brooklyn's Kevin Durant, Denver's Nikola Jokic, and Milwaukee's Giannis all put their names in the race, with Durant taking out the top spot. Meanwhile, DeRozan missed three games during that week after entering protocols. However, in his first two games back, Double D's sent a timely reminder that he's easily among that elite group battling it out for the game's most valuable player this year. Without a hint of rust, picking up right where he left off, DeRozan's averaged 32 points per game, fueling the Bulls to a 133-118 win over the Houston Rockets, marking his sixth consecutive game with 25-plus points. Coach Billy Donovan said postgame, what they did on a back-to-back -back coming off what they did versus the Lakers, to me, it was really impressive. Not that we were perfect, but the focus, the concentration, I really respect and appreciate how they've handled everything that's been thrown at them so far this year. Billy's done a great job of leading his troops, and DeMar DeRozan's flourished this season as the leader of this young Bulls squad. In his first game back against LA, Debo went into takeover mode down the stretch, hitting a dagger in the face of LeBron, that helped the Bulls take down the Lakers in a thrilling 115-110 win, and the Compton-born product of USC was looking every bit like an MVP. He scored 19 of his 38 in the fourth quarter, the most he scored in a fourth quarter in his career, almost single-handedly dragging the Bulls to victory, who were of course without debatably their best player in Zach Levine. But Levine and Debo have a great relationship and could care less who's number one. Dismantling the Lakers with a flurry of smooth, patented mid-range pull-up jumpers, Bulls fans were scratching their heads, questioning whether they were watching number 11 or number 23. DeMar wasn't only on automatic, but there was a special ruthlessness and ferocity he was attacking the Lakers' defense with. Expectedly, the intimidating United Center crowd broke out the MVP chance. DeRozan's 38 points came on 11 of 24 from the field and 16 of 17 from the free throw line, and he didn't attempt a single three-pointer. Based off all the mid-rangers, I don't think you could get a more DeMar-like shooting chart than the one on your screen right now. Billy Donovan spoke on DeMar saying there's a calmness to him, he doesn't get rattled. In Sunday night's win, DeMar tied his season high with 38 points. The second time this season he scored 38 against the Lakers, 
and already his eighth 30-point game of the year. Maybe that 30-point game tally is only seventh best in the association, but DeMar's getting it done when it matters the absolute most in the clutch. In games within five points in the last five minutes, DeMar's tied for the sixth highest scoring total among all players and the second highest total among all MVP candidates behind Kevin Durant. His fourth quarter takeover adds to a long list already this season, as DeMar currently leads the NBA in fourth quarter points per game. According to Mark Spears, DeMar is the first player over the last 25 years to score 50 points in the fourth quarter over a three-game span. Also, Michael Jordan is the only player to average more than his 38 points against the Lakers in a single season. DeRozan said after the W over LA, I just attribute it to my hard work, honestly. I kind of train and put my mind in the perspective of not in the early season to late in the season. I kind of go into games with that same mentality of understanding. I'm a big fan of boxing, and I love watching a lot of guys figure out the fight early and kind of dominate later into the fight. They call it the championship rounds in boxing. I'm kind of big into that mentality late in games and understand that's where it gets harder. So for me, figuring out ways to make it easier on myself and on my teammates, that's the mentality I bring late in the game, and it's been helpful for me and my teammates. Following the win over the Rockets, the Bulls improved to 19-10 on the season, sitting second in the Eastern Conference, a game and a half back of the Brooklyn Nets. Despite Levine being out reportedly until Christmas, the elite playmaking of Lonzo Ball, the seamless bucket manufacturing from DeMar DeRozan, combined with the pick-and-pop presence and beastly rebounding threat that Nikola Vucevic is, the top-heavy talent for Chicago is still there. But that's not even the main factor making them the most difficult to deal with, because while defensive game plans hone in on loading up on those three, that makes it much easier for a talented guard who was quite recently a top prospect, Kobe White, to get open looks. The biggest question for me with the Chicago Bulls is whether or not this team can make a run at a championship in 2022. For next video shout out, let me know your take on if the Bulls are championship contenders in 2022. The top three commenters with the most shout outs by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is The Flesh, who says I think the Raptors could make a run at the play-in and make the playoffs that way. Looking at the standings, the Raps are currently 10th, but they're only a game away from the 6th seed. Thanks for every answer. Hope you all have a great one. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.